I think a CEO is not supposed to be the superstar of a brand. If you buy this at Pijorn, I will send you a G-Shock so you can go swimming. They had a pretty good run in the early 2000s. But the watches were bad. The brand is like overexposed. Now, I would say you could get a Breitling, you still should not get a tag. They went into that meeting like, this is our idea. You could argue that Rolex is a bit overrated. You want to argue it? It's so bad that it's actually good. I love it. Welcome to Plus or Minus, the horological debate show about the best and worst of the watch world. I'm Stephen A. Smith, and this is Skip Bayless. No, I'm not. I'm, I wanna be the, what's the name, the boxer guy, the, the blonde guy? The, no, Max Kellerman. Max Kellerman, that's no. who I am. I'm Max Kellerman. You're Skip Bayless, damn it. <laughs> I'm Thomas Hendricks, host of the 2024 YouTube channel. And I'm Balash Renzi, host of Fratello On Air podcast. You want to start us off? Yes. I will start you off by asking if you could tell me what's the best watch of the year so far for you? Um, you know when people ask your favorite movie and your mind goes blank like you've never seen a movie before? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go with the first thing that comes Three, to two, my one. mind, which is the JLC Reverso Tribute Chronograph. Okay, nice. Beautiful on the front. You flip it over. It's like the skeletonized chronograph movement. I think it's like JLC as their best as far as classy kind of heritage watches mm -hmm. and just like full on mechanical wonderkin kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, it was probably one of the most popular releases coming out of the of the spring, let's say. So yeah, JLC Reverso Tribute Chronograph, best of both worlds. You get two watches in one. Business in the front. Party in the back, baby. And my pick would be the Tudor GMT white dial from Watches and Wonders this year. Okay, why? Because, because when I looked at the watch, I looked at the pictures, I said, this is awful. I don't like it at all. And then I went to Tudor, shout out to Christoph, and um, he gave me the watch and I put it on and it was so amazing. It looked so good on me and I don't really like white dial watches. Mm -hmm. It's just something that maybe only for me, but something just clicked. I'm still not going to buy it. I don't like it that much. Okay. But that was not the question. The question was, what's the watch that I like so far? For me, the biggest surprise positively is the GMT, the white GMT by Tudor. Um, Your pick is? Um, 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 um. The question for you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a little spicy. I know you're a, you're a spicy boy yourself. Uh, most overrated brand? Uh, we, we bashed Hublot before, but I don't think they're overrated. I no, I think because everyone hates them. Exactly, they're just rated where they're supposed to be. You could argue that Rolex is a bit overrated. You want to argue for, it? For, for, for where they are. But I kind of like Rolex. They're very far into number one, I will say. Yeah, yeah. And as... A lot of people say Omega is overrated because it's like number two. No, that's fair. That's properly rated. I think so too. Patek is Patek. And then you have... Well, maybe... I don't want to hate IWC. I just never liked them. But I also don't think they're overrated. Yeah. I would say maybe Breitling. Why? Maybe Breitling. Okay. They're doing a lot of good stuff. But we're not, we're not looking at it from 2022, 23 perspective. We're looking at it. The you overall. think they get too much praise, too much attention? They used to. Okay. For not much. Okay. Now, I think, let's say the, the George Kern era is fine. It's properly rated. Mm -hmm. And they even do really, really cool stuff. Although I'm not the biggest fan of George Kern, I must say, personally. I think, I said this many times, I think a CEO is not supposed to be the superstar of a brand. Mm. A CEO is supposed to be the CEO. You got jealous of Brad Pitt. <laughs> Breitling final answer? I would say before George Ken, Breitling was overrated. Okay. But I, that's kind of an easy way they, out. They had a pretty good run in the early 2000s, I will say. Yeah, but the watches were bad. Exactly, exactly. And people were really like, you know, when people, you talk to someone who didn't know watches, I really like a Breitling. Yeah. Or a tag. That was a two thing. Breitling or tag. I'm like, dude, you shouldn't get a Breitling or you shouldn't get a tag. Yeah. Now, I would say you could get a Breitling, you still should not get a tag. Fair. Okay. So maybe tag is more overrated than Breitling. Yeah. Even though they're also doing some good stuff and they're also doing some hideous stuff. Uh, agreed. Yeah. On but, all fronts. but at least the CEO doesn't want to be a superstar. Okay. Okay, so you're going personal with this one. Um, I'm going to go, Rolex is the obvious answer. I mean, they they make very good watches, yeah. uh, but I feel like it's more props to their marketing team above everything else. I feel like um, 
just on paper, it, they don't deserve to be that far ahead of number one. Yeah. Um, but that's like a little bit too obvious of an answer. I'm gonna go, just for the sake of conversation, I'm gonna go FP Jour naturally. Uh, okay. For the same reason, you know, different different layers of the atmosphere, but I feel like um, Super there's so CEO. many there's so many good <laughs> independents out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's very angry man, I don't wanna give him a bad side. There's, um, so many really good independents out there, and there's kind of like so many different flavors and they're all hitting, but especially when you look at the auctions, it's just FB Jorn all the time that's like really, really capturing the headlines. And I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, when I was on the sales team at Corona 24, we would get calls from people that had a lot of capital at play mm -hmm. that were just like, one person bought an FB Jorn and then complained that it stopped running. He did not know what an automatic watch was. And another person um, <laughs> was like, I want an FP Journe, but I don't know, I can't go swimming with it. FP and Journey. I, and I was like, if you buy this FP Journe, I will send you a G-Shock so you can go swimming. That just kind of proves that the brand is like overexposed where people who don't even know about watches, don't even like watches, don't even know like Horology 101, let's say, are very aware of this brand. Yeah. Technically wise, amazing. Uh, design wise, I'm not a huge fan of those like kind of swoopy little yeah. hands and stuff. Yeah. Typography wise, they kill it but great watch is a little overrated. Don't you think it's the same thing with Patek? Like people who don't know Patek, they kind of like Patek for the, because they heard it or, you know, certain demographic. If, if they know about anything other than the Nautilus, fine. Yeah. You know, they're good in my book. Yeah, but, but, but FP Journey is, yeah, it's, it's a fair, I mean, it's, you have to give it to them, like the watches, the, the complications are nice. Yeah. The design is another thing. And then the CEO slash superstar, effect is yet another thing. I'm just really, I'm- We're I'm, keeping it to the brands, Balash. Okay, I'm really not a fan of, as I said, CEOs being on the forefront. Your turn, right? Yeah. Okay. The biggest superstar CEO. <laughs> That's not what it says. That's not what it says. It says best integrated bracelet watch. Best integrated bracelet watch. Uh, I think you know I love these uh, Otto Finissimo. Yes. I do have issues with, it's just a little bit too expansive. I would love if they made like a 38 millimeter or like a 37, let's say, mm -hmm. that's just a little bit thicker. It doesn't have to be like three millimeters or whatever, like bump it up to five and a half, yeah. I don't care. Some people say they're over-engineered, which I think is a compliment, if anything. They squeeze in so many, it's like a little ziggurat, you know? It's like there's so many different angles yeah. in a small amount of space. And now that they're moving into complications, aside from the perpetual calendar, which does not do it for me, their complications are amazing. I love the finishing that they do with them. Um, they just came out with a marble one for only watch as well, which I think kind of hits as Crazy. well. Uh, but even, you know, the steel, the titanium, uh, they do a beautiful, like, what is it, like sandblasted rose gold. Yes. I think it's a winner. Yeah, I think the the Bulgari is, is, is a very specific and good example. I love the look, I love the feel. I love the size. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great bracelet. Yeah, it's like it's kind of like furthering the ethos of an integrated bracelet watch, as far as like one smooth sculptural around the wrist kind of yeah. thing. I feel like it, it kind of like does that to a T. Yeah. Totally. So what's your answer, huh? Totally. Hmm? Tissot PRX. Okay. For not only for the you know for the bracelet and how it feels, but what that watch model did to the brand and pretty much the whole industry. Fair. Yes. Do you have one yourself? I know I don't. I had a few for reviews, the small ones, the big ones, quartz ones, mechanical ones. I think they're just, uh, they're just amazing. Tissot is killing the market with the PRX. In that price category, it's like sub $700, $800, something yeah. like that. Powermatic 80 movement, mm -hmm. great design, great size, a ton of colors. Um, now it's not only integrated, but you can have it with a rubber strap or the leather strap. Yeah, the rubber cool. For, for someone who's into watches, but not, or getting into watches. Yes. And wants something that's fancy, that's a bit out there, it feels good, it wears good, it doesn't feel head heavy. It's, yeah, it's a great option. So yeah. I think it's, the, the, the model is really, um, it's really gonna be in the books, history books. Fair. Are you ready, are you ready, are you ready? Born ready. Best city for watch shopping. The one that comes to mind is not in Switzerland, it's not Geneva, it's probably London. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of options there. Brand boutiques, you know, from Grand Cycle to um, Omega to Rolex, whatever. Um, vintage shopping, Burlington Arcade, mm -hmm. Somlos, mm -hmm. all those guys. Bond Street, you know, there's Watches of Switzerland, huge. Um, London or Dubai. Yeah. 
I mean, both strong watch cultures in yeah. both of those cities. Well, let's do it like this. London in Europe, Dubai in the Middle East, Tokyo in Asia. You have to pick one, that's how this works. That's, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick three. And in the US, I'm not gonna say anything. Tokyo is also cool. Yeah. Pick I would- the different stuff. Yeah, I would go, I had a great time watch shopping in Tokyo and I feel yeah. like a lot of it's still pretty undiscovered in a way. Yes. Like there's just so much to do. I've heard good things about Hong Kong mm -hmm. and you know, gotta go with the, you know, my home turf, go with New York as well. You know, whether you're doing more like brand boutiques on Fifth Avenue, like mm. 47th Street, Diamond District kind of thing, or Chinatown, like there's a lot of little nuts and crannies. Canal Street. You know, um, <laughs> for fun, you know, if you have 50 bucks. Um, it's, yeah, there's like little different worlds. Everyone knows what they have, obviously. Yeah. But there's, you know, we're going for variety and we're going for quality and I feel like you get both of those. But maybe, maybe, maybe I have to agree with you or, or where we, we've both been to Tokyo. Maybe that's really a very um, kind of understated city for, for yeah. vintage, or not vintage, sorry, watch shopping in general, specifically vintage, but also just really they have everything. Yeah. I mean, probably the best city is like Little Rock, Arkansas, where they just yeah. like don't really know what's, you know, Lovely. what they got, what they don't. Yeah. But yeah, bit cities, yeah, fair. Good. Uh, what you got, what you got? Best dial color. Ooh, um, you know, I like a monochromatic look. I like when a watch feels like a unit, like a, a full sculptural, mm -hmm. complete idea. So, you know, if you look at the Royal Oak, the best colors there, in my opinion, are like a silver gray kind of thing, mm -hmm. because it really integrates into the architecture of a watch. It doesn't feel like one alternate element within the sculpture yeah. of it. And I'm not a huge colorful dial kind of guy. I'd rather change a strap or just wear clothes that are more colorful. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna keep it plain and simple for this and go, you know, mi metal color, let's mm. say. Yeah, black. Yeah. Black. Yeah. Because black don't... Um, Crack? Kind of. I don't want to say that. The black. I think it's it's just, um, yeah, it's boring. Who cares? Um, That's or fine. Some, some people might say it's boring. It lets the other pieces of the watch speak for themselves. Exactly. And I think black is just like, like, like a neutral color that you can wear with everything. And it's more dressy than white, in my opinion. You take like a, let's say... Disagree, a, but go on. Let's say, let's take like a reverso, just a regular reverso, time only with a black dial, a regular reverso time only with a white dial. I think the one with the black dial, you can wear it with a t-shirt, you can wear it with shirt and rolled up sleeves, or you can wear it with a tuxedo. The white might look a bit strange. It's more specific, I will say that. Yeah, so that's why the black is, I think, more yeah. like neutral and goes with a lot of things. And I think, okay, Speedmaster is not a good example because it's a rather sporty watch, but what I always think is look at, the, look at the model and think about the model in the black dial and the white dial version and see which one is better. And I think most of the time the black dial version will win. Except for the Tudor GMT. Apparently. Except for the, yeah. Yes. Um, best watch car collaboration. <laughs> Brightly for Bentley, not. <laughs> um, we can go over worse ones at a different time, but you have, to, for be, Bentley. You have to be positive for now. I know Brightly you like to be salty. Bentley. Uh, best watch car collaboration. I don't keep it positive. I don't think there's many. There's not. <laughs> Ferrari has like 50. Yeah, well, then, well, then bad. Jacob and Co. Bugatti, bad. Yeah. Brightling for Bentley, bad. Yeah. Uh, JLC, Aston Martin, bad. I have a good one, but I, I won't tell you um, right now. Boy. You could do IWC, Mercedes, AMG kind of thing. Bad. Do Porsche design. That kind of counts, right? Bad. Some are good. Bad. We talked about this the other day. We were in agreement. Bad. I like one model. Um, that's enough. You you only need uh, one okay. answer for this. No, no, no. But that's. Not, I know it's a harder question. But it's not. A, no, no. Bad. It's a tough. If you want to give up, you can give up. That's fine. I know. I'm not gonna give up. Okay. I have. I have a. I have a. A good answer. The Corum Rolls Royce is so bad that it's actually good. I love it. It's so bad. That it's actually Where it's like the grill, the grill, the yes, watch. the grill with the spirit of ecstasy on top of it. It's so bad that it's good, but it's bad, but it's good. Or, yeah, I'm a fan. I like I like any brand. I don't I hate to be a broken record, but I like any brand that really goes for it. Mm -hmm. And you know that when they went into that meeting, like we're gonna do this is our idea, and they really had to have an extra cup of coffee that awesome. day to really sell it. You know? Yeah. 
I'm a fan. And it's like, you know, you're never going to see that kind of thing again. Absolutely it's it's not. not just a logo on a dial. It's like they they committed. No, oh, it's basically a car's grill on your wrist. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I'm going to go a little bit more reserved. I'm going to go Gerard Perigo, Aston Martin, Laureato Chronograph. They okay. have like this like green dial with the like kind of grill pattern on it. Not a grill shape, but like a grill pattern. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very slick looking watch, basically. It's like, it's just very tasteful. It's not, you know, not a huge Gerard Perigo fan. I don't know, I like them. It's um, not bad. Not yeah. a biggest Laureato fan, let me put it that way. Do love Aston Martin. And so this is like, and it just feels like an organic pairing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like of the integrated bracelet chronograph ones, I feel like the Laureato is one of the better ones. And then they kind of took it up a step with this dial variation. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair one. It's a good one. It's a nice looking watch. Um, I believe it's your turn. Yes, sir. Best strap slash bracelet type for summer. Um, a lot of people do a NATO. I don't like a NATO in summer. Me either. It gets very stinky. Me either. I'm a big like micro adjustment fan. Me too. Which kind of rules out NATO if you want to like get very specific about it. Perlon. You could do pearl on. I was leading up to it, but thank you. Um, you know me a little <laughs> bit too well. Yeah, it's a pearl on strap. Um, I have a lot of them. They're easy to take in and out. It's only one piece. You can get lots of different colors. Yeah. And as your wrist expands, like literally like minute by minute, you can micro adjust it yeah. down to the millimeter. You can do dressier ones. You can do, you know, sportier ones. I have like neutral tones and like black and brown. And then I have like bright yellow. I and know. then in the morning, I can just swap in a minute in and out and I'm good to go. Yeah, it's a good one. It's nice, easy to clean. Yeah, you throw it in the wash. Yeah, it's yeah, easy. Yeah, the only yeah. bad part, which uh, I think you warned me about and I did not listen, is that if you have precious metals like a soft gold, for example, the grain from the strap will press in and actually delete the hallmarks on your watch. Yeah. Not that I'm going to sell it, but you know. Yeah, you can you can just take whatever tape, just put a tape on it or anything to protect it. That's that's yeah. But that also goes for like NATO and stuff. It just just moves a little bit. That like friction, kind of yeah. etches. And the tension, I wear my watches tight too. Yeah. And in the summer, it's like, it just happens sometimes. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so I chose the best answer. What's the second best answer? Well, that's not the best answer, but I think bracelets, steel bracelets. And I'm also a big fan of micro adjustment. And sometimes, it, you just don't have it. Mm -hmm. So you just have to size it, maybe size a teeny tiny bit, you know, bigger than your wrist. Yeah. What I what, in the house and then you walk out and then it kind of yeah, expands no, no, to fit. Yeah, exactly. And then you still have some wiggle room. But what I sometimes do is I take it off if my if I feel that my my left wrist is a bit swollen and I put it on the right one. For like Does that work? Mm -hmm. I was like, that's a great idea, but I don't know if it works. Yeah, I think it does. Okay. I think it does. So for me, it's bracelets, leather strap, not so much NATO. I don't, I used to wear a lot of NATO and I don't wear it anymore. Rubbers could be, but you can do this with every watch. Then again, you cannot do every, I mean, bracelet also for every watch. But, but um, if I have a watch that has a bracelet, I usually put it on for the summer and then maybe change it for the winter and stuff. Definitely not leather. Absolutely not leather. Even yeah, if it's water resistant. Of course. I mean, we agree there. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about a bracelet is I, I don't like the weight of it sometimes in summer. Like when you're really Fair. hot, I don't want to, it just feels like more for some reason when it's hot. I don't That's know when why. you put the G-Shock. And it's a little slippy sometimes. And True. True. Next. Um, 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 um. Best complication. Chronograph. Yeah. To me, it's a chronograph. Any and every chronograph. Can be uh, a Rotropon, can be a flyback, mono pusher, and I think they're highly, highly underrated because people usually don't pay attention to the the, minute, the, the chronograph scale. Is it like a, a touchy meter bezel or scale? Is it like a pulsation. A pulsation, telemeter? So there's so many options. Is it like a combination of all two or three, you know, some vintage watches? I will never use a bezel, a chronograph bezel personally, but. We could. Uh, you could, yeah. And so I but think that's. But I'm also that's... a little bit dumb. Yeah, but, yeah, but how many people dive with a dive watch? True, fair. So I would say chronograph. Um, and you committed to that as well. Yeah. Like it, it's very you. Yeah, I feel like. two subdial, three subdial. The best part about chronographs is like just the feel. There's a lot of like tactility to it, you know? Woo! Regatta timers. Mm. 15 minute yeah. countdown bezel. Uh, Useless. Countdown. Useless. Unless you're sailing. But then, yeah, chronograph. Anyways, what's yours? Um, I am normally a moon phase guy. Okay. Do you have a moon phase? No, I mean I, I'm I'm working up to it. I'll say 
They're mm. not, a good one is not cheap. Like, what would you get? I mean. Ming? No, I don't like, I, I love Ming. Do not like the Ming face. Oh yeah? It's just like a, it's like a percentage wheel almost. Yeah. It takes the romance out of it, which is why I like Ming. I think the best one I've ever seen is, I mean, Lon did his great ones, but maybe Arnold and Son. They have like a, a like a Magna Luna, I think it's called, where it's like basically the whole dial, and they like really went in on the detail of the moon phase. Mm -hmm. I like it because, like me, it's pretty and useless. Um, but if my real answer is the first complication that like I actually kind of learned something, and it was the equation du temps, mm -hmm. the equation of time. Equation of time, yeah. So which is basically super useless. It's useless information. It was like when I. It was very eye opening for me when I. First learned that a day is not exactly 24, 24 hours. hours, especially as you're in different parts of the world. It's the leap year. Yes. And it's it's a conversation started beyond conversation starters. Mm -hmm. like. So a good you one. went very functional, I went the opposite direction. So last one already? Oh yeah. Okay. Best dive watch. Okay. Uh, my last answer was about <laughs> the Diving. first first example that I really kind of fell in love with, and I'll say the same answer for this one as well. Mm -hmm. This is not like the greatest dive watch of all time, maybe, mm -hmm. but I remember being at a Sotheby's auction in New York and seeing a Tornick Ravel, basically a, an Americanized Blancpain in disguise, mm -hmm. and just falling in love. I think a lot of divers are so function forward that the design part of it really falls away. But this is one where, yes, it's like military spec through and through. It checks off all those boxes, but it's just a very attractive looking watch. There are not a lot of like iconically designed or like just beautiful mm -hmm. in a spiritual way dive watches. And that was one. I think the bezel is very balanced without doing too much. I think the dial has kind of just enough going on. I love the kind of like arrowhead on the second sand. Mm -hmm. And then the moisture indicator is so, so cool. It's like that. OG diver, yeah, grandfather diver. I, I mean, I can't afford them now, of course, um, vintage or modern. Blancpain has like really fallen off as far as divers. They went in a total opposite dire design direction, and yeah. it's like if it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. Blancpain, Tornick, Ravel, whatever you want to, however you want to call it, that's what I would go it's for. Great one, yeah, it's a great one. I have to go, Doxa Sub Three Hundred. That's not what I thought you were going to say. Because we had talked the other day about like, oh, if I could sell these watches, I would get a yes. four digit something I, I would something. Get, yes, I would get a Rolex Submariner 50, 5513. But if I look back, you know, the history of diving and dive watches and how the Doxa Sub 300 came about, I have to say, to me, this is um, more of an iconic dive watch. Rolex Submariner is an iconic watch, but I would not take my Rolex diving I would take a sub. Well, not a vintage, yeah. But. Yeah, not a vintage, yeah. But even the new one, maybe. But um, yeah, I really like Doxa. Doxa sub, Doxa sub 300 or sub 300 T. But I really like the sub 300 because the case is much thinner. The profile is much thinner. There's a dome crystal. It's very a lot easy of to wear. Are chunky boys. Yeah, and, and that one is not. That's the difference. And that's why it's really, really cool. If you look at the new ones, the re-editions, you have a bunch of colors. They have the ceramic case. You know, they have the aquamarine blue, which I had on when I was in Miami and it's just perfectly fitting to the color of the swimming pool in the hotel and the on the beach. So it's a, it's a very comfortable, very easy to wear watch. The modern, not the vintage. The vintage is, is quite expensive now, but I would I would rock the vintage as well. I don't have any. I have the mm -hmm. sub 300T, but I would I would wear the vintage or the new. And I think that's uh, arguably the best diver out there okay. for me. What's the Datsa with the um, the phallic shape on it, the little wiener? It's basically just a special market model for the U.S. It's the U.S. diver model. Okay. Just called the yeah 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 the, the black lung, the yeah. aqua lung logo. Yeah. It's yeah. the the oxygen tank. You had a very serious answer about that, but I have the humor of an eight-year-old. So here we are. The penis style. You want to end it here? Yeah. Yes. All the questions? No we'll, questions? We should do more of these in the future, huh? Yes, we will. Okay. Cool. I hope so. Balish Frenzy, Thomas Hendricks, this has been Plus or Minus, the horological debate show about the best and worst of the watch world. We'll see you next time.